Hey there, it's Aviva from Elementor. Welcome back to how to build a website in Elementor. In the previous lesson, we set up our design system, and in this lesson, we'll build on that to define the website settings and structure, which include elements such as site identity, the header and footer, and the site layout. If you're like me, you probably can't wait to get started on designing your homepage. And we're almost there. But setting up the site structure is integral to creating a website, so I highly recommend completing this step before you get started building. We'll begin with the site identity here. This section is where you define your website's site name, description, logo, and favicon. These details will be called upon repeatedly for reuse in a variety of locations throughout your site, as well as externally, such as in web search results. Enter your site name and your site description, which is also known as the tagline. This information will display in search results, so it should be accurate and contain relevant keywords. Next, we'll add the website logo. You can choose from many different image file types. But for beginners, I recommend starting with a JPEG or PNG file. PNGs are great for logos because they display text and iconic graphics in better quality. And they also allow for transparent backgrounds. So this is what I'll use. Last is the site favicon. Your favicon appears in your site's browser tab for quick and easy identification of your site, among other browser tabs. Ideally, it should be a minimalistic graphic without too much detail, since it displays at a very small size. Click Update, and refresh the page to preview these changes. Refreshing the page brings us back to the editor. So click the hamburger menu and site settings to go back to the main site settings menu. Next, we'll create and style the header and navigation menu. The header appears at the top of each page and helps guide visitors as they navigate the site. Before we begin, let's consult our design so we can quickly apply all the right settings. We have a logo in the upper left corner and on the right, we have a menu with all the links to the pages on the site. Great! So now we can go ahead and carry out this design via the header settings. Note that the header and footer options you see here will only display if you have the Hello theme installed. Click to enter the header settings. We'll go through each option and configure the elements we'd like to appear in the header, along with their layout and styling. As per the design, the logo should display, so leave the site logo on the default of Show. Next, toggle the tagline to Hide, as it's not used in the design, and keep the menu on Show. Even though the menu is set to Show, nothing is displaying because we haven't yet selected a menu. Let's skip ahead in the settings to set that up so we can see what we're working with. Click Menu here at the bottom and select the menu we created earlier in the course. To display the selected menu, we'll need to update and refresh. Perfect. Let's continue where we left off in the header settings and check out the different available layouts. The default layout is a perfect match for our design. Now we'll take a look at the width options. Full width will bring the outer elements of the header content to the edge of the screen, and boxed keeps the content confined to a container of a specific size. Set it back to boxed. In the content width, you'll notice the percent sign and PX for pixels. These indicate that you can choose the unit of measure for this setting. In this case, PX is the default. You can use the slider to set the width, but in our design, we saw that the website was designed to span 1,500 pixels, so you can type in 1,500 to be precise. Now set the gap to 20 to allow for the white space that we saw around each section of the design. Below that is the background type. 
You can use it to set a background style, such as a color or gradient. Go ahead and have fun playing around with it, as these are options you'll see again in the future when you build the rest of your site. When you're done, click the square color swatch and clear the color by clicking this icon to leave it on the default of white. Click Site Logo. Type in 125 for the width. Now we just need to style the menu and we'll be done with the header. We've already selected which menu should display, so we can move straight to Menu Layout. Switching to drop down will set the menu as a hamburger icon for all sizes. We'll leave it on horizontal and use the breakpoint to set the size at which the toggle or hamburger icon displays. Since we only have three pages on this site, they'll still fit nicely at tablet size and we won't need the breakpoint to kick in until the display hits mobile size. Next to color, click the global icon and select the grape global color we created earlier in the course to set the navigation menu links color. Do the same for toggle color. We can't see it yet, but we will in just a moment when we preview the header in mobile view. And last, for typography, click the global icon to choose the global font style we created for the navigation menu links. OK, it's time to preview the design for responsive. Click the responsive icon here on the bottom panel. Perfect, everything looks great on mobile. The hamburger menu appears and we can click it to see the menu. Switch to tablet by clicking the tablet icon at the top of the editor. Tablet looks great too, so we don't need to make any responsive changes here. But don't worry, we'll cover how to make device-specific changes in detail later in the course. And with that, the header is ready. Time to take care of the footer. Exit responsive mode, click back, and click footer. Referencing the site design, we can see that the footer consists of a colored background and copyright text in the center. Back in the editor, the first thing you'll notice is that the footer settings are pretty similar to the headers. So let's run through them quickly. Go ahead and hide the site logo, tagline, and menu, as we don't need these elements. Set the layout to centered and the content width to boxed, 1,500 pixels, as we did in the header. For the background, click the paintbrush icon for classic and select grape. Expand the copyright section and type in your text. Select a global color for the text and a global font for the typography. Click to preview for responsive. Everything looks great. The header and footer will automatically repeat on every page on the website unless they are disabled from the page settings. This will allow your visitors to easily navigate through the site to find what they're looking for. Click to return to desktop and go back to the site settings. Click to enter the layout settings. Recall that the width of the website's content is 1,500 pixels. Rather than set this on each individual page, we can set it once and apply it to all the pages by doing it here in site settings. For the content width, type in 1,500. Set the default page layout to Elementor full width to hide the title and display the header and footer on every page. Great, let's update to save the site settings and go back to the editor. I'll go ahead and remove the examples from the page by right-clicking here and selecting Delete All Content. Now with the website layout and structure ready and a fresh clean page, it's finally time to start building the page content. So keep watching and join us in the next lesson where we'll build our homepage.